Okay, so if we check out example 1b here, we can immediately see that we have two squared variables, which is going to eliminate the possibility of a parabola. I can see that the coefficients are different in front of the x squared and y squared, which will eliminate the possibility of a circle. And then I can see that the coefficient of y squared is negative, which means that this conic section is a hyperbola. So if we remember the formula, or the general conic graphing equation, that's going to be x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Now I chose to put x first because in my general form, in my problem, x squared came first. So I'm just being consistent there. And then a squared is always first with the hyperbola equations. Now, in the last example we had, we had one squared term, which means we had to complete the square one time. Here I have two squared terms, which means I have to complete the square two times. So I need to go ahead and rearrange my equation so that I have all my x's together and all my y's together. So 4x squared minus 16x minus y squared minus 4y minus 4 equals 0. So I've just rearranged things, just moved things around so that I can keep my x's together and I can keep my y's together. So now I'm going to go ahead and start completing the square. Remember, in order to complete the square, chapter 1 we learned that you have to have a positive 1 coefficient for your squared term. So I'm going to factor out a 4 here and I'll be left with x squared minus 4x plus my square now I have a negative y squared, so in order to get that y to be a positive 1 coefficient, I have to factor out a negative 1 y squared. And when I factor out a negative 1, that's going to change the sign of that middle term. So you've got to be real careful there. And then plus the box. Now the box is always going to be addition because we're adding in a squared term. Minus, or let's go ahead and add that 4 to the other side. So equals 4. Now we're going to add the boxes on each side. Notice how I left a little space in front of the box because I actually am adding in four boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and put a coefficient of four there. And then my next box that I'm adding in, I'm actually adding in a coefficient of negative one. Now remember how to find the value inside the box. That's your b divided by two squared. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, squared is 4. So inside each of these boxes is a 4. And then positive 4 for the y divided by 2 is 2, squared is also a 4. So each box is going to get a 4 in it. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually complete the square. So 4 times here I'm going to end up with x minus, that's a weird minus minus 2 squared, and that 2 is coming from your b divided by 2, and we've got that same sign, minus, 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 we don't need to write the 1, but I have subtraction because of that hyperbola, y plus 2 squared, and that positive 2 is coming from my 4 divided by 2, and then the plus, you want to have those same signs, equals 4 plus, go ahead and multiply 4 times 4 to get 16, and negative 1 times 4 to get a negative 4. So you can clean up this right side here and um, add it all together and see that it does equal 16. So just copy this down again, and keep in mind what our equation looks like for a hyperbola. It is set equal to 1. So we are not done yet. What we have to do now is divide by 16. When we divide by 16, we have to divide everything by 16. And then notice that the 4 over 16 here is going to be able to simplify. So we'll be left with x minus 2 squared over 4. So 4 over 16 is really simplifying to 1 over 4 minus y plus 2 squared over the 16 equals 1. So now we have that standard conic form where we could graph that if we asked you to. Now let's look at example C. 
So we have two squared variables, which eliminates the possibility of a parabola. They have different coefficients, which eliminates the possibility of a circle. And there is addition in front of them. They're both positive. So that's telling me that this is an ellipse. So if we recall the standard form of an ellipse, x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Now, the a squared and b squared in the denominator, that's not so important. Um, for an ellipse, you have to remember that x always comes first, and it's equal to 1. We're not really quite sure what our a value is going to be, so I don't know if a is really going to end up being underneath x or not, but that's the general form that we're looking at. We're trying to make this um, general equation look like the standard form equation. So I've got two squared terms, which means I'm going to have to complete the square twice. Uh, we want to move all the x terms together and then all the y terms together. So 2x squared minus 4x plus y squared minus 4 equals 0. Now, we lucked out here. We don't have to complete the square two times. And the reason why we don't have to complete the square two times is we just have a y squared term. We don't have any y terms. We don't have any y, uh, linear y terms. So this y squared is telling me that the y coordinate of my center is actually going to be at zero. So that's nice. It makes the problem a little bit shorter for us. So what we do want to do, again, try to get that x squared coefficient to be a positive one. So factor out a two. So x squared minus two x now, because we took out a two, plus the square plus y squared. We don't have to complete the square here, so that's going to stay just like it is. I'm going to go ahead and add that 4 to the other side, so we'll have it equal to 4. Remember how to get the number inside the box. You take b divided by 2 and square it, so negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 1 squared is 1. And then don't forget, since we added a box on the left side, we have to add a box on the right side. Now don't be mistaken, we factored out that 2, so I'm really adding in two boxes, which means I need to put a 2 in front of my box on the right side. And we'll go ahead and put 1 in that box so that everything's nice and even. So now we can go ahead and factor this. So x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals, combine like terms over here, this is going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6. Now we are writing the equation of an ellipse. An ellipse is always set equal to 1. So to finish this problem off, we're going to divide by that 6, and we'll divide every single term by 6. And you'll want to make sure you simplify as you can. So right here, this 2 over 6 is going to simplify to just be x minus 1 squared over 3 plus y squared over 6 equals 1. So in our final answer, you can actually see that our a squared, our larger number, is actually underneath the y. And that's okay. We just wanted to make sure that we started with this equation here so we knew exactly the format that we were looking for.